Right. We're now finishing the fifth chapter of the 20 chapter <coughs> Hasidic discourse, <coughs> which is called Bati Lagani. Bati, I have come, Lagani, to my garden. These words were said by King Solomon, referring to when the Holy Temple was built. <coughs> The more exactly when the tabernacle was built, <clears throat> and God was saying these words, "Bati lagani, have come to my garden." Where are these words written? They're written in the <coughs> the book called Song of Songs by King Solomon. And God is saying, "I've come back to my world. I've come back to my garden." In the beginning, the world was a beautiful garden. That's where God wanted it. <coughs> it wanted to be in this physical world, and because Adam. <clears throat> and the generations after him did not do what God wanted. <clears throat> Why did they not do what God wanted? Because God wanted them to have free will, and God wanted them to have the urge to use it improperly. And, and that's why they were in the world, and to, over, to overcome and to transform this urge. <clears throat> and to do what God wants, not to get uh, angry, not to get depressed, not to have lust desires to be selfish, to be self-centered, <coughs> false ego, <coughs> these things prevent us from being truly ourselves, being happy and productive and unique and <coughs> kind and loving, sensitive. <coughs> this prevents us from being who we really are. So <coughs> because of that, uh, things have to be f fixed in a sort of a drastic way. Who, did the, who took it on himself to do this? Abraham. Abraham was the first Jew. Everything he did, every second of his life, was just to serve God, and he didn't see any results whatsoever. <clears throat> In the language of the Midrash, he brought the Shekhinah, he brought God's presence from the seventh heaven to the sixth heaven. Didn't come down to the world. And Yitzchak brought it a little closer, and Yaakov brought it a little closer. So the generations afterwards, that the generations are listed, <clears throat> And the, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, Amram and the Yishai, the Amram and, and uh, finally came Moshe. Moshe was the seventh generation. And Moshe, he was the one who fixed it up so that it would be like God wanted it to be. There would be God's revelation in the world. But it was only in one place. God wants it to be in the whole world. It was only in one place. Says the Rebbe, not exactly so. It wasn't in one place. It was in every single human being, or more exactly, in every single Jew, because the Holy Temple was for the Jews. <coughs> every single Jew now became like a small Gan Eden, a small wedding canopy. Ganuni, it says Ganuni, the word for in Hebrew for Gan Eden, for heaven. <coughs> Gani, the garden. Of Eden is the same word as Ganuni, as a wedding canopy. So each Jew became like a holy temple where God and the Jews and the world are married together. They're united. Each Jew became. <clears throat> and that's how it stayed until uh, from Moshe's time. Now it depends on us. Each and every one of us has to do the work. Each and every one of us has to make ourselves into a holy temple. And not so easy. Even though that Moshe already started it and he made it available to everyone. But it's very difficult to do. Let me just close the door one minute. Door. <clears throat> so, in order to do this, says the Rebbe, every Jew is a, is a holy temple, and you already have fire from above, that's your godly soul, and you have fire from below, that's your power of contemplation, of thinking, deciding. <laughs> And now we have one of the central ingredient, <clears throat> which is going to end sacrifices. Every Jew has all the animals he needs to sacrifice your animal soul. And you don't have to sacrifice them. All you have to do is, I mean, you don't have to, to kill them. All you have to do is make your animal and your natural drives come close to God. Uh, readjust. It's called korban, to come close, korov. And <clears throat> the one big missing ingredient in order to make this whole thing work is shtus, you have to be crazy. This world is so overpowering and it lures us with such promises of pleasure and success and comfort 
and identity and being who we really are and self-expression, self-realization and status, etc., etc., that <clears throat> every and everybody, every person wants to have friends, everybody wants to be social, be, be normal. So the world calls us and tries to um, <clears throat> keep us away from our true selves. In order to be, what is your true self that you feel that you're a creation of God all the time and you're a big miracle? Everyone's a big miracle and that there's a purpose to the world. That you can learn from the past and you can hope for the future and that you can make the most of right now. <clears throat> But in order to do this, you've got to be crazy in this world. And sometimes you'll do things, everybody thinks about, what's everybody thinking about me? People might scoff at me, they'll laugh at me if I do what God wants. If I say uh, I want to keep Shabbos, or I want to eat kosher, or I don't want to look at that type of movie, or I don't want to <clears throat> do that, I say that type of thing, or laugh at that type of joke. I don't want to do that. And I do want to you know, go out and put tefillin on people and make sure that every Jew knows what the... Uh, Shabbos is and what Torah is, etc. <clears throat> so people laugh at you. So you have to be a little bit crazy. And we have an example of what type of craziness you have to be. In the time of the Talmud, time, there was a great rabbi called Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yitzchak. And he was an elder rabbi. And when the, and they would come to the weddings, in those days the big rabbis in the weddings, it's still the, done now, the rabbis would, they would add an era of austerity and <clears throat> holiness and properness. When they would come, they would barely move, and if they didn't move, they would clap a little bit. Oh, this was a big novelty. The rabbi clapped, the rabbi lifted his foot. There would come one rabbi who would act like everybody else, and suddenly would whip out three sticks and start dancing and juggling with them. And all the other rabbis who were trying <clears throat> to look as serious and, and uh, honorable as possible, and they were joking and laughing, what, what type of a rabbi is this, this is not. <clears throat> and they all laughed at him, and they all told him to stop, and they said, you're embarrassing us and you're shaming us, and he didn't listen to them. And finally, at his funeral, when he passed away, so there was a big pillar of fire in the shape of one of these sticks that stood between him and everybody else, and all the rabbis got the point, and that they were wrong, that they were wrong, that they should have done the same thing, even though we do not find that after uh, his funeral, and they realized they were wrong, there was a big rush on sticks. You know, people didn't go to the, whatever it is, the, uh, what, what are they called? The, the stick store. The, not the stick store, there's these stores where they sell, you know, these things for magical, magic tricks and everything. Whatever. There's, a, there's a name for it, I forget it. <clears throat> they go to the, you know, to the, uh, what is it, the unusual store, and they buy Sticks to juggle at weddings. One guy buys a stick, another guy goes and buys a, 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 a monkey costume. Another, you've got to be crazy, right? Like Reb Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, a big fire stood between him and everybody else. Another guy goes and buys a, a, what, a unicycle that's, you know, that's one story tall. <clears throat> and the people, all the rabbis go, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. You know, why didn't it happen? Now, in this generation, it's supposed to happen. But you don't have to do it like that. <clears throat> Even though that explains that what Reb Shmuel Bar Yitzchak did in those weddings was fitting to the wedding. At a wedding there is a revelation of the essence of God to unify men and women who are two opposites and keep them together and to build a family. This is a very, very difficult thing to build a family. A person has enough trouble that taking care of himself. Now you're going to take care of your wife and your wife complains all the time to your children. And the children are, are not doing always what you want to, and it's very not so easy. <clears throat> so therefore, a person that's a normal person, that what do I have to get married for? What's the point? Why why do I to get married? Or if I'll get married, and I'll just do what I want. <clears throat> Everybody has to do what I want, right? I'll I'll get married. My wife will be my servant. Well, wake up the next morning, and how do they say? Smell the coffee. It does not work that way. If you want your wedding, your marriage to be the way it's supposed to be, you have to change yourself. You know, you have to make a... How do you change yourself? By thinking about what does God want? What does Hashem want from me all the time? And not think that I am God and I know what I want and there's no problems. Everybody just says, do what I want. So that's what a wedding is. A wedding is a very amazing, holy thing. That's all, all these people, all of us, every in the, in the world, eight, million, 8 billion people in the world... They all come from a marriage of a man and a woman. 
If it wasn't for that, there wouldn't be any people in the world, which some people would probably say it's not such a bad idea. <coughs> but we don't. We don't. We say the more people in the world, the better. Every human being is a miracle, and that's what the Jewish people are chosen from for, to tell everyone that. So, here we go. Therefore, look, hey, let's take it. We are now on, <coughs> the first word on the line is, it's, a, it's an abbreviation. Look, hey. Look, hey. Therefore, you have it? You have it? See where it is? First word on the line is this abbreviation starts with the letter Dalit. The last word on the line is yeah. behind it. It's like right in the middle of the page. Maybe a little bit above the middle of the page. You got it? Yeah. Lochem. Lochem, therefore, Hoya was a Mishkan, therefore the tabernacle in the desert. <coughs> Which the tabernacle in the desert was the prototype of the holy temple. It was made of Atse Shitim. The walls were made of Shitim wood, and so were most of the <coughs> vessels. <clears throat> and the uh, holy temple were made from atse shitim. They were made from shitim wood, right? The ark was made, it was coated. They were coated with gold, they were coated with this, but they were made from atse shitim. They were made from this atse shitim. Shitim wood. Shitim, because why? Hainu, hailamaila miyadat, that which is above <clears throat> knowledge. <clears throat> that which is above normal. Hamit Barer, which has been purified, Benasa, and has been created. How do you create what is above normal? You create it, me and from, Halamata Midadat, those things which are below normal. <coughs> now, again, according to what the Rebbe is saying here, and we're talking about Jews here, a normal Jew is a Jew that does what he's expected to do. He does Torah, <coughs> he does mitzvahs. <coughs> Like I said, in Yemen, the, the Yemenites, in Morocco, there was no such thing as a religious Jew. Or not. There was a Jew. Every Jew kept Shabbat. Every Jew put on tefillin. Every Jew kept kosher. Right? <clears throat> that was just what a Jew is. A Jew is just a person who is attached to God. <clears throat> That's a normal Jew. <clears throat> According to this, my mom. Then, in those places where the Jews were <coughs> pure, there came in the, the French influence, the English influence, and the Jews started to act uh, what they thought was normal, normal for the world. But for normal for the world is abnormal for a Jew, below normal. Suddenly, Shabbat was the same thing as Tuesday. <coughs> kosher food was the same thing as not kosher food. <coughs> you can't scientifically tell the difference between them. And science decides everything, right? <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> there was no special way to act and no special way to talk and there was no what, what God demands is nowhere near as important as what I demand in fact who even says that God demands everything and that was the whole confusion that came into the world which is now in order to get out of that confusion and that craziness <clears throat> of not acting like yourself <clears throat> so that's why there is <clears throat> the Holy Temple and the Rebbe to make us act crazy for holiness. The Holy Temple was made from Shittim wood to show that it's not good enough to be a normal Jew. It's not sufficient to just do Torah and the commandments. You have to be crazy for the Creator, the one who gave and is giving the Torah and giving the commandments. <clears throat> That's what it means. I'll say, Mikdash, make for me a Mikdash. Make for me a holy temple, v'shachanti betocham, and I will dwell inside of them, betochal echad v'echad, inside of each and every one. V'zeh, and this, bo, comes al yadeh, by means of avodat adam. A person has to work, has to change himself. Avodah means changing yourself. Ba'avodat abirurim. By doing what's called birurim, realizing what is not good and what is yes good, and doing what is good and not doing what is not good. Birurim. <clears throat> it's called selecting, refining. Shapol lahapcha chashuchal anahora. That this causes a transformation of darkness, of egotism, of selfishness, linahora, <clears throat> to Judaism and to selflessness. 
<clears throat> and what happens when you don't think about yourself? You're happy. You're not worried about what's going to be and what was and angry. Hainu lahafoch et alamata minadat to transform that which is below normal, below Jewish normal, the olam of the world, from velt, from the world. Shiyiyah, this should be, mizeh, from this, from this, from the world. Lamay lamiyadat, above normal. We're not trying to escape the world. Maybe temporarily, like when you pray in the morning, it says you're supposed to forget totally about the world, think only about God. <coughs> That's why it says that men and women sit separately in, in the shul. Because men and women, they'll, they'll, they'll talk to each other, they'll be social, they'll, they'll, right, they're friendly. When, <clears throat> when you're praying in the morning, you're supposed to be separated from everything in the world that's normal, including your wife, including your job, including your hobbies, your habit, your, 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 <clears throat> your, your uh, investments, everything, your friends. That's what it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be no talking in show. Only for the, that one hour, one half an hour, you're supposed to be completely separated from the world. Right? It's a false state. It's a, almost like afterlife type of a state when you're thinking only about God and only praising God and only thinking about God. <clears throat> and then you have to really forget about the world, negate the world. <clears throat> but the only reason you do this is in order to put an anchor up, a, a connection to your real purpose that's here, to the real awareness that there is God and that God really does love us and care about us and creates us every second <clears throat> and trusts us and, and we, is our partner. That's what prayer is supposed to do, to get us emotional about God and less emotional about the world. And then we can be in the world, we can transform that which is <clears throat> supposedly normal to be above normal. That's the, what the Jews are chosen for. There are many things that a person, Noeg, does, <coughs> conducts himself and does, vile because of Zoe Tutvelt, because everybody does it. You do things because that's what everybody does. Hadavorim Elu, and these things, they're like a law. You cannot move them. You come up in their place. Lefi, because. The Cain who and Hagas are olam because this is the conduct of the world. Ukamoba kam and yanim and nimus like many things of etiquette, vadome and similar things. <clears throat> right? How you act when you meet the queen? You have to do like this. You have to do this. Okay, that, that's all right. We can understand that. But to do it all the time, every moment of your life, you have to act like the English people do. You have to act like the French people. You have to act like them because why? Because you just, that's what everybody does. I'll do it, it's fun. <clears throat> this has to be transformed to what's above normal. In the service of God. For instance, Zmani Achila. The times of eating. Zmani Shina. The times of sleeping. <clears throat> Because of the world, they are set in their times. <clears throat> Especially when you live in one of these, what are they called, these uh, Germanic countries, right? And in Germany, Switzerland, and everything, they have their times. When a person eats, he eats, you don't disturb him. When he goes to sleep, when he wakes up, <clears throat> right? You don't disturb these people. The day is set. Everything is set. England, right? Things are set. And even when a person has to work in business, <clears throat> even when he has to work, nevertheless, time of sleep is sleep. Time. These are pierrot built in the zazim. These things are not moved at all. Wait, it's nine o'clock. I gotta go to sleep. It's. You realize you call me up at nine thirty? Are you nuts? It's nine thirty at night. You call me up and right? you don't call up a person. Built the kolal, and they are not pushed away at all. The ikar at all. In other words, the world, business. This is important. Time you eat. Oh, this is important. Okay, so nothing wrong with that. Says the Rebbe. Oh yeah, listen to this. Uzmania can be show Torah, but the times that you set for learning Torah and tefillah and prayer, heim nidachim, they are pushed away. Ve'in lem kava. <clears throat> the main things in the world which you're supposed to be doing is praying. <clears throat> when you connect yourself to God, you get emotional about God. When you learn Torah, 
you know, connect your mind to God, you understand what God wants from us. We're learning the Holy Torah. The Torah is the wisdom, the will of God. <clears throat> That's why we're here. To eat, business, to, I'm sorry, eating, sleeping, business, those are very important things. Of course they're important. If you don't eat, then you, you can't learn Torah, you can't do, do commandments. But you're here in the world in order to pray and to do the commandments and to use that energy <clears throat> that you get from learning Torah, etc., to put it into your business. And when you talk to people, you say a word of Torah to be an honest person, to be a positive person, to be a happy, a helpful person, not to think about yourself. That's the reason that you're in the world. That's what the Torah and the commandments do. But what is it exactly the opposite? That you say that now I'm in the world right in order to make business. And learning Torah, and maybe that'll help me to make business better. Maybe. <clears throat> At least I'll be a calm approach. Maybe a little more calm. A little more. And sometimes they're pushed away at all. Oh, praying. Yeah, I prayed. I died. Wow, you know, five days went by. I didn't even daven. I didn't even put on tefillin. I was so busy. Huh? A person that puts any, makes any sort of a self-reckoning. Is there any real wisdom in this to make money, to make a... To me, who you dare eat those I mean, there's a known thing which uh, everybody dies. People die. That's it. People don't live forever. No one in the world lives forever. There's eight billion people in the world. <clears throat> there's even more people in the past that have been uh, living right in the world. How who knows how many you count them? How many of the generations? Twenty billion. Whoever it's twenty. <clears throat> there is no. Everybody dies. Everyone in the world dies. You think you're going to be different. I'm going to be different. They're not going to be different. Right? Everyone is going to die. So you're going to make all this money. You're putting all your energy into what being famous, having your picture in the paper. Look in the paper. See how many people's pictures are in there. Take a paper from last year. You see all these people. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody cares. The only people who cares who they are are the, are the, 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 the newspaper people because they have someone's picture to put in their paper. It'll sell a picture. <clears throat> and then what do they do with the money? Also, they put their picture in the paper. They're, 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 they're obituaries. Okay, the Isa of Midrash Rabbah, like it says in Midrash Rabbah, and Adam Shalit, a person cannot rule Omar to say, I'm Tinuli Ajaz Echeshbonati. Wait for me. Hey, oy, 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 I'm, I'm going to die. Wait for me to make my, I have to make my my uh, my will and testament. Ajaz Savela Beiti. I have to command everybody what to do. I have to tell people, they have to make a, how do you say, a, an accounting. End of the year, uh, what do they say, an end of the year, uh, um, what was that? <laughs> the word, word slipped out of my mind. They make the end of the year, uh, what is it, a, accounting for the end of the year? A, a tax return? No, no, like the tax return is right, but a person can't, okay, this is the end of your life, right? Final accounting. <clears throat> But, uh, uh, the counter, they're closing the world, they're closing the world. They, they close the companies for what? What do they call it? Like, how can it be a slip word slip my mind? And the, anyway, they make at the end of the year, they make a, they close the, 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 the store, they close the firm for a day, for a year, and they make a inventory. inventory. <laughs> they make an inventory, right? That's the exact word. The person can say, oh, the guy's dying. Hey, I got to make an inventory. Wait a second, angel of death. Wait for me. Doesn't work that way. It's true that everyone's life is limited, but every second is infinite. Every second of life is infinite. If you use a minute, a second of your life for a purpose that God wants, then that second becomes infinite. If you do something that's meaningful, then that second remains forever. <clears throat> and the main thing, how can it be that you put all your attention <clears throat> into making money, into being successful, into having status, and the main reason that your soul came into this world, <clears throat> he, he forgets totally. <clears throat> all you're concerned about is what people think about you. <clears throat> <clears throat> and in their terms, right? Oh, he was a singer. Oh, he had a, a, a beautiful bodybuilding, whatever it was. He was a beautiful uh, the, the, the biceps, uh, this. Right? At first, uh, he, he, was a, he could run fast. He could just, these are very nice things. These are, this, the, that's okay if you want to have those things. But that's the main thing of your life. That's what your life is going to be. What about being human? 
<clears throat> there's no human being that can run as fast as a cheetah or something. Right? A, you see, so you lost this part, right? <clears throat> when it started, you started off. There's no human being that's stronger than a machine. So you're strong. <clears throat> so strength cannot be the thing. But being human, right? To being human, to being to having love, to having meaning, that an animal and a machine can't do. This is a very unique thing. And that makes every second infinite, regardless of what anybody thinks about you. Even if nobody knows. Who rak mitzad ruach shtus to give all your atten- uh, uh, attention to things that are so temporary, this is the Ruach Shtus, is a feeling of insanity. Shemechase al emes, that it covers over the truth. Hine zoti so this should be a person's service. La folks do stolom, to transform this insanity of the world. The yamur al nafsho, take control of your soul. The yikvalo itim la Torah, set times for learning Torah. As then he shachanti then God's presence will dwell when as God the, the Creator will be revealed in His creation. lo giloi or that suddenly you'll feel <coughs> the Creator, you'll feel a purpose, you'll feel godliness in your soul, you'll feel that you're not alone, you'll feel that you're important, you'll feel happy. <coughs> every single second is really infinite, and God is creating you every second. But you also have responsibility. This is kadeskapia sitra achra. That's what it means when there is controlled the sitra achra, the feeling of separateness. When this feeling of being separate and selfish is controlled. Sha'al yadei shepoil hafoch at the shtust by means that you cause <coughs> to transform the craziness of your animal soul. Undem koch from velt and your interest. Your the, the 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 excitement that you have from the world el kedusha, by doing torah mitzvahs, when you transform, <coughs> you just move the excitement you have <coughs> in the world, and you put it in new excitement in doing torah mitzvahs. Why? Because you change your values. Suddenly you realize that the world is wonderful, it's valuable, but nowhere near as valuable as learning Torah and doing commandments. By means of that. Felt the kedusha, the kiyum atorah mitzvahs doing torah mitzvahs. As then a stalik that will be that will spread out yekora the kodesh brucha bekula on in all the worlds. Every Jew has the obligation to change the whole world. How do you change the whole world? Not by maybe making a political movement and having a million people agree with you. You personally yourself. You personally yourself do good. You personally yourself <coughs> do. What you're supposed to do, you person yourself are excited about doing what the Creator wants, is by means of this, God will uh, <coughs> he'll arrange it so that other people will come and you'll be able to teach one more person, two more people, three people to be genuinely interested. That's, that's enough to change the whole world. One person, it says that one person can change the whole world. It's in the, there's this butterfly effect with the, with the uh, what is it, the chaos theory that a butterfly can flap his wings, it can make a little wind, and that wind can make another wind, and another wind that will change the whole entire universe, change the, the, the path of the, some star, everything will be changed. One good act of a little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. Well, first of all, a person has to think of how can I make myself a better and a more honest and truthful person. Then there's Mayor there shines out, Umidgala, or so we call him, the light which surrounds all the worlds. A light of God, a feeling of Hashem, which defies all definition. It defies all the worlds. The Creator Himself is creating me and you and you, each one of us, with a special job that no one else in the world can do. And by means of that, we'll be dancing together with the Rebbe Melech Mashiach. Now, tomorrow we'll learn the ninth chapter of this Mimer, which is the Mimer, which is what's being learned this year. God willing, in order to make a new, happy, and beautiful world with Mashiach now.